Welcome to our Friday. Weren't you waited to win? It's no ordinary Friday. This is one of those special Fridays in the year. It is the day before the 2024 renewal of the Metropolitan, which will take place in the Western Cape at Hollywood's Kenilworth. And of course, the other special Friday will come through the first weekend of July when we look forward to the Durban July. And that will come through first weekend of July this year. Now, let's look ahead to that big meeting, which has a lot of betting opportunities and and the bonus is that the tab are running a competition. You just have to press on the competition icon. And there you have to also be in a position where you have a turnover of at least 100 Rand on the Met itself. And you stand to win big prizes. The first prize is 15,000 Rand. Second prize is 10,000. And the third prize is 5,000 Rand. And where better to start than the people who could help us to be part of the winnings that come the end of the day that is tomorrow the 27th of Jan. Daryl Marie with me in studio and hybrid is an informed Darren Burrows. Welcome to you both gentlemen. Daryl, good morning to you. Yeah, morning to you too, Cecil. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, I don't know if the viewers want to be listening to myself because I stuck him um, down the river with Pretty in Pearls and Darren found the winner. So maybe Darren is the one to focus on. He's clearly informed. But uh, I'll just say that uh, taking both your tips, it was uh, if you took double flow to the yes. two, yeah. you'd have got the quartet. So Correct. I think it's it was one of those trappy races, let's yeah. be honest. Yeah, it was. Yes. No, it was well found, Darren. Um, yeah, Cecil, the opening leg of the bar pot, I'm relying on the race runners uh, to at least one of them. I've gone with three of them. One of them to finish in the top two. Uh, I've gone with Handsome Prince. Talk to the master and commanding all of numbers six, 11 and 19. Hold your thought there because I'm going back to your Bible selection. You said talk to the master. Let's talk uh, to <laughs> the master himself. Uh, Darren Burrows, a very good morning to you, sir. Good morning, uh, Cecil and Daryl. Um, yesterday was a good day. Uh, Thursday at the Vol, we did find that it was Gilda Gray from 8 to 1 into 4 to 1 managed to hold the, the challenges off. But let's focus on Met Day. I think it's a lovely card. Um, I've got a bank or two for the pick six, and um, I think it's catchable. Well, in saying that, my pick six tipped uh, for Waiter to win. I haven't chosen to banker, but I do fancy that it was Winter Cloud as a possible banker, so I've included a scratching there. But focusing on race two, I thought this horse talked to the master the horse to beat. Um, a cracking debut behind Handsome Prince, number 19 on the card. And I think he's going to improve a lot from that run. Richard Faree takes the ride. There are whispers about Sicily, that he's a lovely horse. Um, Dean Canemar is not really known to, to win uh, first time out with his juveniles. They usually improve in their second start, but you can't ignore his chances. And then commanding, I thought this horse... Uh, is capable of a big run on that run to Roman agent. Well, on that handsome Prince form line, and not too much separating the 6 and the 11, although the 6 was having its first run, as you rightly point out, a talk to the master. Let's get back to Daryl and get to the uh, bipod rolling. There will be two bipods on the day. The second one starts later on in the afternoon. The first one starts in the usual position of uh, race number two. The second bipod starting in race number six. We're going to focus on the first one. And uh, Daryl did point out that he's got three horses. I interrupted you, so my apologies. Yeah, Cecil, I've gone wide. I thought Handsome Prince uh, won easier than the margin suggests last time out. It is an additional 200 metres, but then again, talk to the master was having his debut run. Um, this time was quicker than the Phillies equivalent on the day. I think three and a half lengths qu quicker. Um, I'm in the dark of here. They're going to be spread right across the field uh, or the track. I don't know where the superior going is going to be. Um, the safe route for me, 6, 11 and 19. I hope I get through. Right. Any bankers along the way as we look ahead to the slide coming up on the screen as to your bipod selections and the outlay. As I mentioned, this is the first bipod to get underway. And the first leg, as mentioned by Daryl, he has got 6, 11 and 19. And of course, the banker comes about in a race number seven. And that will be number five in that conclusive race. That is an outlay of 180 Rand. And remember, you have to be on by 12 or 30. We're underway with our exotics as we get in to the preview for the big meeting on Saturday, the 27th of January.
Well, the politician stakes uh, keeps uh, moving around. This is the Schwab's politician stakes, rather, a grade three, and that's over the 1,800 meters that we get into the feature action as early as the five past one. Now, Mr. Burrows, as far as the politician is concerned, a green with MB seems to be all the rage anti-post. Any uh, sort of ideas as to what can oppose a green with MB? Well, Cecil, I thought Green with Envy very hard to beat because I've been waiting for this horse to go the 1,800 or 2,000 metres. Just the manner in which he finishes his races off. I mean, he's grade one placed in the guineas, beaten a, just under half, a, I mean, just over two lengths behind Snow Pilot. That was a cracking effort. And uh, even with the 60 kilos, I just believe that uh, he could be in a different division. But in saying that, there's a horse called Call to Unite that uh, first run out the Maidens in open company. I thought that was a good effort behind Gentleman Joe. And receiving four and a half kilos, he could get involved. So I'm not looking past eight and nine. Eight and nine for the first leg of the PA. If uh, Darren was uh, selecting uh, the uh, PA for us, it is a uh, Darrell. And uh, we leave it to you. Eight and nine, would you be in concurrence there? Or you would actually uh, be more positive and yeah. aggressive? I haven't banked the eight. I've backed it up with number two. Uh, obviously, Green with Envy. I mean, Cecil, he brings grade one form into the race. He's a... Uh, He's a length or two inferior to the best of his age group. So uh, the only negative is he has to give weight around, away. Uh, and he usually gives start. So it's never easy to give start and weight. But he's the class package in the race of that, there's no doubt. And I have to agree with Darren, the extra 200 meters is certainly going to be in his favor. So uh, his class could certainly pull him through a beer. I backed him up with number two, Oriental Child. Now, from day one, this horse appeared to have ability. He then went slightly off. But if you listen to the post-race interview by Brett Crawford in, with his latest victory, Cecil, he said this horse, they made a few equipment changes. Um, they changed the bit. And last time out, when put around the bend once again, he settled. And uh, that was the key to his, excess, his uh, victory. He settled in runny. And he was extending at the finish. So he's bred for the extra, being by Vercingetrix out of a graze in May. He could be anything going the extra 400 meters. I just hope that he does settle. And if that's the case, receiving six kilograms, I think he could be the favorite's biggest danger. So two and eight for me in the second leg of the bar pot and the opening leg of the PA. Thank you so, so much. And of course, what would help for the followers of uh, number eight, a green with envy, Craig Zaki back to winning ways yesterday afternoon with uh, Laguna Verde. So hopefully that confidence uh, will uh, transpire into Saturday. Let's have a look at that PA suggestion from Daryl. As he says, he's not bankering at the top, but as he did in a race uh, number uh, seven, in uh, that uh, bipod, he has banked Princess Keller and then on uh, to uh, the uh, last uh, leg, which will be the big one on uh, the afternoon. That is the 2024 renewal. He has gone with Bank of the 11. See it again. And that is a pretty inexpensive outlay of 120 Rand. That is a race number three, the third of 11 on the card. Be on by the off time to race number three. And that is a 13.05. Well, I'm hoping that our contributor with the pick six uh, to wait to win for Saturday will help me to break my duck as far as uh, the Met and the pick sixes go. It is none other than uh, Darren Burrows. But before we get uh, to Darren, what sort of a pick six do you think, uh, at least at the end of the day, we will get as uh, far as the dividend is concerned? I remember a few weeks ago we had uh, Give Me Another who made it a five-legged pick six at Turbentine and we still had a carryover. So see it again if it does confirm uh, the expectations. Doesn't guarantee that it will be a, a little a handful of um, change as far as the, the dividend is concerned. Yeah, I say so. I don't believe we're going to get a, a a major payout on the pick six. I mean, you're not going to pass the class horses in in uh, two or three of the other races. So I don't know. You never know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> stranger things yeah, have happened. Stranger things have happened. Yeah. Uh, in the opening leg of the pick six, I would uh, narrow it down to two runners. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, but. The race certainly doesn't stop there. If you want to play wider, I'd add in numbers three, uh, that's uh, Pomodoro's Jets and six Quasi for sure. But I think at my command and uh, Captain Fontaine should suffice. Now, I like the chances of Captain Fontaine. This will says a, the ideal prep and look at the progress he made from run one to run two for the yard. And if you watch that later start, he was absolutely cruising 
and he was still in need of that. Richard knows him better this time around. He's a few kilograms better off with Silver Operator. And having his peak run, I think um, Richard would have learnt a lot last time out. So I think he's a major player over here. If you look at the weight structure, I mean, at my command, is absolutely slung in over here. But he was slung in last time too. And a horse um, who was 12 and a half kilograms out managed to beat him last time out, Mucho De Niro. That's a bit of a concern. But this is, horse is ultra consistent. And he's going to run another bold race over here, Cecil. Um, I think he he, he was he's swinging on, swinging on the bit turning for him last time out. Uh, he looked like the winner. I don't think the dropping trip is going to be of any concern for him whatsoever. So if you want to go wider, play numbers 3, 4, 6 and 7 from my side. But for my perms, I've gone with 4 and 7. Thank you so much. Now, Mr. Burrows, Mr. Marie makes a very, very good point about uh, being beaten by a horse that was uh, so inferior at the weights. But uh, subsequently, Mucha De Niro perhaps was always under the radar because has been supplemented and is part of the final lineup for the big one in race number nine. Do you include uh, any other horses or at uh, my command, do you give another chance to come through and uh, make back money for those uh, poor punters who lost money last time out? Well, Cecil, um, at my command, is best weighted. And if you go two runs back, he ran second to see it again. He finished in front of Charles Dickens and Princess Keller. Um, that was a great effort. But he's never really been a group one type horse. Um, he's just off them. But uh, last time out, he was beaten fair and square by Mucho De Nera. Um that, that was over 1,800. I think he's actually best over 14, 16. So he is going to take some beating, but the horse that's carrying level weight with him and is out at the weights is Quasi for sure, who's actually going to be my, my top selection in the race. Now, this horse has a terrific turn of foot. Um, when you see him win, I mean, he, he absolutely takes off. Um, he's won at Kenilworth before, if I'm not, not mistaken, and he was beaten a short head where um, the jockey thought he had the race won. But um, I think he's had a good enough prep. He ran in October. He's run in December in the Merchants, 1,200 meters, flashing up late. And I think this is the ideal track and trip. So I'm going with four and six. And then the bottom weights with chances, Pomodoro's Jet, a horse like Underworld and Inamorare can get involved. Just don't ignore Silver Operator because he's a course and distance specialist. Yes, we saw that last time out. Right, let's have a look at exactly how we're going to structure this. No bankers, as that Darren pointed out at the start of our preview show for uh, Saturday. And he's got uh, the minimum uh, horses in the, the last leg race, number nine, and that is a seat again. And also included in that race is the number 13, and that is Ruskalin, who seems to be finding a lot of anti-post support. Right, so that is a race number four. As we move on to race five, please be reminded race four is off at uh, 20 to two. All right, so we get into the Pongrats Olympic Dual Stakes. That will be a sprint over the 1,200 meters. It is a listed affair. And again, another competitive one. We did hear the name Winter Cloud uh, mentioned earlier on by Darren Burrows. We've got the scratchings, by the way, before we hand over to uh, Mr. Marie, before Darren rounds it off with the selections. Eight, a winter greeting and uh, the 11. Cold Heart Stare are out. That will leave us with a field of uh, 14. Nice uh, renewal of uh, the Olympic Dual Stakes, uh, Daryl. And uh, we're looking forward uh, to a winter cloud. Uh, certainly as a two-year-old was uh, certainly one that uh, you thought will go through the divisions. And there's still time. I think uh, there's life in the uh, young uh, three-year-old yet. Yes, yeah, so, so I think she's had a fantastic prep leading into this race. Um, she's having her peak run. Uh, I think she was in need of a last start in the Cartier Scepter Stakes because she moved up dangerously and then just uh, flattered that last 50 meters. So I'll give her a strong winning chance. Strictly on paper, it's not going to be clear cut for her because you have to give chances to Shantastic. You have to give chances to a nice roughie, uh, namely Miss Marguerite, who I think is three and a half kilograms better off for less than a length beating. So if you are playing wide, I'd certainly include number 14, Miss Marguerite. Uh, others that have chances, Cecil, if you watch this fully now, I've never really rated her. Pacific Green, uh, number four. But with Craig Bantam last time out, he put her to sleep. And if you see her f finishing effort on that occasion, with 52, if 
if you can just give her uh, a similar right and relax her at the, uh, at the back of the field, she'll certainly be low flying. And another one I've gone with Cecil is number two. Now, Distant Winter, I, I know she's inferior to Winter Cloud on a few runs, but she's another one that I think um, will appreciate coming back in trip and, and, and also having her peak run. So if you plan to beat the five Winter Cloud, I'd add numbers two, four, um, 12 and 14. Right, a 2, 4, 5, 12 and a 14. And that would be the first leg suggestion. However, the man who's actually going to put it all together or has already put it together for us is that Darren. You did say you would be tempted if you had to, to your, for, your hand was forced to bank a winter cloud, but obviously you're not. How many horses in the jackpot, the first of our, a second of our three jackpots on the afternoon? Uh, Cecil, for me, Winter Cloud, the horse to beat. Um, I can't believe a week ago when the betting came out, she opened six to one joint favorite. Wow. And now she's 15 to 10, seven to one bar one horse. Um, so on the betting, it looks like a one horse race now all of a sudden. But um, I did tip it early in the week, so it's also shortened due to that. Um, she's won the Strelitzia. She ran second in the Alan Robertson beyond Mrs. Geriatrics. Um, she had a bit of a break. Her comeback run was a good win, beating Oni San. She flashed up late and won. Um, then she ran an inferior race. I don't know what happened, but she was eased out of the race. And last time out, I just I didn't like her, but I just wanted to see how she how she came on from that uh, that bad run. And it was very eye catching. I thought wherever she runs, she's going to improve three lengths from that run in her next start. And this is now. So for me, Winter Cloud, the perfect race. I think she's a group type filly. And this is only a listed contest. So for me, Winter Cloud, a possible banker. I've had a strike. I actually took Gilda Gray into Winter Cloud, 10,000 to 400. So at least I'm sitting with a nice 25 to 1 ticket. But uh, winter cloud over, distant winter, the drop in trip's going to suit. And the other one I've included is enemy territory at a big price with only 55 kilos drawn hard up on the outside. So five to beat two and 16. Yeah, talking about enemy territory, as we look at your uh, jackpot selection, uh, Darren, I hope he will be riding tomorrow because I see in uh, Port Elizabeth, he has been stood down, but the good news is that he is not injured. It is family responsibility. We will hope uh, that all is well and uh, he may be in a position to take up his engagements. It is an outlay of uh, 576 Rand and uh, if you missed the early part of Darren's thoughts on the jackpot, his first choice will be the five winter cloud. He's also got another selection uh, for us. Let us just take in that selection before we move on to the halfway stage. It is Winter Cloud. It is a win bet at the moment at a 29 to 20. So there is still a little bit of a value, especially if you can find something to go with it or a strike on the nose if you are a high roller. I think you'll show a handsome profit. Thanks so much to Darren for that uh, jackpot. That is jackpot two. Jackpot on having started in race number one of an 11 race program. Okay, so now we get in uh, to the uh, Grade 1 segment of our uh, program at uh, Hollywood Bets at uh, Kenilworth. It is, of course, the renewal of the World uh, Pool uh, Cape uh, Flying uh, Championship. A wait for age, a Grade 1. Great horses have gone on uh, to bigger and better things, having achieved success in this uh, Group 1. Some have actually come up here and uh, continued their success, winning our own prestigious Group 1, which is a computer form sprint. But, uh, Darren, race uh, number 6. Uh, this is the renewal. 1,000 metres is uh, the trip, and I think uh, the eagle weighted clash will be between uh, the uh, protagonists last time out the eight uh, thunderstruck and uh, the nine easy vongo vongo who was said to have been uh, slightly in need of uh, that run when uh, beaten by thunderstruck pierce stradham rides for sean and a regular pilot uh, for uh, peter musket and that is on easy vongo vongo now give us your thoughts at uh, dice and uh, now the stable looks to have turned the corner Obviously, Dice is in the Western Cape. Hopefully, Dice can continue what was a very good uh, form up until that last run here on the High Felt. Uh, yes, Cecil. You know, a lot of people are making it a tourist race between Thunderstruck and Essie Vungu Vungu. But uh, when I looked deeper in the form and I thought, you know what? Um, this it could be more open than that. Now, Isi Vungu Vungu, his comeback run after a lengthy layoff was a cracking effort. But it, his second run back, and it's right on top of his first run. So only two weeks between the two runs, or three weeks, 
Um, that is my only concern. If he's come on from the run and he doesn't run a flat race, uh, he's definitely going to take a lot of beating. Now, Thunderstruck's improved since they dropped him back in trip to 1,100 and 1,000 meters. Uh, he's really won well. Um, he's going to be right there once again with Pierre Stratum. Now, I'm not ignoring Dice. I think he's a massive runner. You know, when he won over 1,000 meters three runs back, he was super impressive, never came off the bit. And last time out behind Mrs. Browning, we saw how he overraced early, and he was never going to find extra. So he's not going to be restrained this time over 1,000 meters, and he could go very close. Adam Marcus, uh, my stable, he's in form. And Bereave, um, I know the thousands are a bit on the sharp side, but he was flashing home behind Thunderstruck last time out, only three parts of a length beaten. I think he's going to come on having his peak run. So don't ignore Bereave. And then Sergey, another obvious inclusion. He is best over 1,200, but he's always right on top of them. Okay, so that is a list. They're headed by the uh, eight and nine, but uh, four dice is uh, certainly one that has to be uh, given all the respect and believe, rightly so. Adam is in a very, very good form. Now, let's turn to the man who's got a selection for us. It is a pick three. His uh, favorite bet, uh, Daryl. <laughs> the uh, selections for that first leg, how many are you going here? <coughs> Cecil, I've actually left that pass. Okay. Um, I've gone with Because eight. of current form of the stable, yeah, which I, I think I, is I don't turned. Know. I don't know. Um, I like the fact that he's coming back in trip um, because the last run was all wrong. It went pear shape for him. But I think Isi Vunga Vunga, um, he's actually not my topic, but he's obviously going to strip fit. He, there was clearly some meat left on the bone with his uh, comeback run. Um, so I'll, he's an obvious inclusion. Thunderstruck had a perfect preparation going into this race. Um, he's, he's my number one pick. I expect him to confirm the form with Isi Vungu Vungu because he's had a better preparation in my mind. And I've backed him up with Sergio. So I've gone 8, 9, 11. Now Sergio, if you remember his comeback run in the Bantry Bay, he had Thunderstruck stone cold 100 meters from home. Thunderstruck rallied and got the better of him late. And then last time out in the Merchants, he had to give weight all round. Um, he's another one that's had a perfect preparation leading into this race. So I'm leaning towards Thunderstruck and Sergey over Isi Vungu Vungu. So in the first leg of the bar part, I mean the pick three, I've gone 8, 9, and 11. Now, talking about that uh, pick three, let's have a look at it. It is a race uh, number six. And as we take in uh, Daryl's numbers uh, for that uh, pick three, eight, nine, eleven, Banker, Princess Calera, and then in uh, race number eight, it is numbers uh, eight and uh, ten. And they are namely Taylor of the Comet and uh, Bavarian Beauty. So by all signs, it is uh, going to be a very, very strong pick three. The uh, races are six, seven and eight are for Sean Terry, Thunderstruck, Princess Keller and the tail of the comet who make up a Daryl's pick three are all from the stable. That is the race number six as we move on to the last leg of uh, the uh, first bipod and the commencement of uh, the second uh, bipod would have been underway already. Well, I'm very much in agreement and I'm sure most of us would be in agreement with you, Mr. Marie, about the five uh, Princess of Cala, but I do say if we are to look forward to Red Palace doing bigger things, bigger and better things in time to come, has that to show up well against Princess Keller? Yeah, Cecil. Um, one can put a line through Red Palace's last start. Um, listen, she was far from disgraced, but you could see in running, she was always going to be in trouble. She was over racing terribly. Um, I think if she breaks well, uh, she is going to lead and be allowed to stride. So I am putting the paddock stakes uh, run behind Princess Keller. That race wasn't run to suit. Uh, the pace should be on with Red Palace being allowed to stride this time round. And I'm going to say Princess Keller is going to set the record straight and reverse the form with Beach um, Bomb. Beach Bomb, yes. Yeah. Um, I think I think strictly on the rating she, she has to I know that she's nearing the end of her career and this could potentially be her last race. Cecil, uh, I'd like, I'd love to see her go out on a high. Um, I'm giving her one last chance. Would I be surprised if she was beaten by Beach Bomb once again? Not at all. But I think with the pace being on this time round, we're really going to see the best of her. Right. Now, there is a bit of a thread there, Mr. Burrows. We had another superstar of uh, the fairest sex uh, bid farewell in uh, glory. That was on uh, July Day, the years go 
tend to escape me, but I do recall Legislate won the July itself and Beach Beauty had its last ever run. But what a career in Princess Keller. Well, I wouldn't say I would even hazard to make a comparison, but Princess Keller has been a superstar over the last uh, few years. Are you, are you bullish about Princess Keller on uh, Saturday? Um, not at all, Cecil. Um, you know, I did like Beach Bomb to beat her last time out and nothing went Beach Bomb's way. It was a slow run race and she still quickened up to beat Princess Keller when she got first run on her. Uh, Princess Keller's three runs this season as a six-year-old, not the same horse she was. It actually reminds me of Captain's Ransom in her last two starts, where she was four to ten and beaten both times, uh, where she just didn't have that acceleration anymore. Um, in saying that, she's got the draw in her favour, and I think she will be in the first three places. Um, Beach Bomb, it's a pity she's drawn out at 11, but she does like to run from off the pace. I'm just hoping that she's not more than five lengths off the speed and she'll mow them down and probably win the race. But I'm hoping there's a decent pace on and that she's not eight, nine lengths off the speed turning for home because then Princess Kala could get first run on her. Um, Red Palace, I don't think she stayed 1,800 metres last time out. And if you go back to a mile run, second in the guineas, this filly's also going to be right there at the finish. So I make it between 11, 5 and 4 in no particular order, but I would like Beach Bomb to get her head in front at the line. I think she's got that turn of foot just like her damn Beach Beauty, and uh, she's already a two-time grade one winner. Of the rest, make it snappy, working very well. Let's see how she goes after a break. And one more, Asia Pambile, I'm not going to exclude. Um, Happy Chance has to also go in if you're playing wider because she was only a short head behind Princess Keller last time out. So the uh, principles would be a 5, 11 and 4. Those should be the three involved in the finish. And then uh, we go wider with the likes of uh, the 6, make it snappy. And the 8, Asia Pambile, that would be the short list for Mr. Burrows. I do recall... The year when uh, Candice was quite competitive uh, with uh, Clouds on Fault, but found just one too good uh, with uh, Captain's Ransom, literally obliterating the field on that particular occasion. Thanks very much uh, to the selection there. Beach Bomb is a good value in the race at uh, 33 to 10, given what uh, it's up against the Princess Gala at uh, 27 to 20. That is uh, race uh, number seven as uh, we edge our group closer to that uh, big one that is two races time and uh, the 2024 renewal of uh, the metropolitan okay so race number eight will be the first leg of uh, the last uh, jackpot i do believe and it is uh, going to be uh, what a water starter to that jackpot the cape racing gold rushes over the mile and uh, you've got quite a field assembled. Nico was telling me quite a fact yesterday that people pay as much as a 400,000 rand to get an entry into this obviously very lucrative race. First prize of being a seven and a half million rand. I think if you've got uh, that uh, spare 400,000 and you've got a bit <laughs> of talent, I think you would enter. Give us your idea. Now, race number eight is over the mile. Taylor the Comet, after starting its uh, campaign in the Western Cape uh, with a bang, Things haven't quite uh, fallen in uh, to place. Yes, it was a two and a three quarter lengths to Tusue. And uh, then in the Guineas, it was five lengths uh, seventh uh, to Snow Pilot. How do you rate uh, Taylor of the Commerce uh, uh, chances on Saturday? Uh, massive, massive, massive winning chance in my mind, Cecil. Uh, strictly because there have been several equipment changes. Namely, a compression mask goes on and the tongue tie goes on. I think... Mr. Terry might have even changed the bit because this horse has uh, took a hold in his last start. So once again, it's over a mile and he does have stamina doubts. He's prob probably uh, at his best a uh, furlong um, less, over around about seven furlongs, 1,400 meters. But I think with these equipment changes, that could be the winning move. And now obviously he's been in the Western Cape for quite some time. He doesn't have to travel. Uh, whereas the favourite, um, she is travelling to the Western Cape. It's a long journey. I don't know how she's travelled. If she's travelled well, and I'm sure she has, um, she's definitely the horse to beat. I mean, she, she's a grade one winner. She could have furnished with her with the time she's been off the track um, uh, since her last start. She she 
could be well ahead of her current rating. But the fact that she does have to travel, whereas her biggest danger has been there uh, and done it, um, I've just backed her up. So for me, I'm not looking past numbers 8 and 10. Uh, I think they certainly will dominate. Lots of interest in a race uh, number eight, uh, barring uh, the uh, big money that's on offer. Obviously, the uh, 10 Bavarian Beauty has been a talking horse, uh, as uh, Daryl points out uh, rightly, is already a Group 1 winner. Now, the 8 tail of the Comet, obviously, will have to pull out all the stops uh, to stop uh, the uh, Tony Peter train. He's only got the one runner on the card that uh, afternoon. From a local perspective, before you give us uh, your thoughts and uh, your selection, anything that can trouble the uh, visiting two horses, uh, Darren? Um, for me, the only horse that can trouble Tale of the Comet and Bavarian Beauty has to be Winter Rainfall if she stays a mile. But the man in which he quickened up late over 1,200 last time I'd suggest um, if Aldo gives her a patient ride, she might just stay on very strongly and they do rate her. I have to be with Bavarian Beauty. Her last run in open company against the Colts with 58.5 kilos, um, she absolutely cruised home. Never in doubt. Pierre Stratum knows her now. Tony Peter, one of the best trainers around. Um, I'm sure that she's in great order ahead of this race. And uh, if she can slot in two, three lengths off the speed, I think she, that burst of speed of hers will put this race to bed. Now, Tale of the Comet, when they drop this horse back to 1,200 meters, I'll probably have the biggest bet of my life because I think he's an absolute sprinter. Um, he's out of Comet Chaser, who was a thousand meter specialist. And you can see in his races, he just wants to get on with things. Um, he wasn't disgraced in the Guineas or the uh, Punters Cup, um, but he didn't find a finish. And that's my concern. But in saying that, he's dropping in class and he's got the ability. So I'm going Bavarian Beauty in a big way. Bavarian Beauty will certainly be uh, one of the focal points of uh, the afternoon. Uh, the only horse from the Peter Stable to uh, raid uh, Cape Town. Obviously, no logistical problems was there for a while. And those colours have already been seen uh, to good effect uh, this week. Those of uh, the Playgate SA and nominee Mr. Fukrat uh, Ibragumov. That is the race number eight. And that is the confidence underlined by Mr. Darren Burrows. It is a uh, Bavarian Beauty for a win. And again, still your favourite, but uh, still in uh, the race at 19 at 10. That is the race at number eight as we now head to the big one. And that is the 2024 uh, Metropolitan. And that will be the ninth of 11 races on the card. 16.45 is the state of time. It is at the 2024 World Sports Betting Cape Town Meta Grade 1 contested, to be contested over the 2,000 metres. And unfortunately, we have lost a runner that will certainly have been priced up in single digits, and that is the ultra-consistent number five, Bless My Stars. And nonetheless, uh, the show has to go on. It is a uh, 12 runners in the race, uh, scratching or no scratching. Number 11, see it again, uh, would have uh, been in uh, the red. Now, let's start uh, with uh, Darren. The buzz, obviously, as per normal for, in the, for the uh, Met, has uh, been uh, reaching some kind of a crescendo. This year, the general uh, feeling about uh, the quality of field or the competition in uh, the race, uh, given also the scratching of uh, Charles Dickens, has there been a tad bit response or it is the Met and that's all that matters? Well, it looks an absolute one-off race, Cecil. Uh, see it again, had a perfect prep over a mile. He's a better horse over 2,000 metres plus. Um, I'm not too concerned where he's positioned from the draw. As long as there's a decent speed on, he will mow this field down and probably win hands down. But in saying that, I've included Rascalian into my pick six because last year in this race, he was very unlucky not to just about win. And he's a group one type of horse. Uh, he's very unlucky to only be a full-time winner as a six-year-old because he's placed in some of the biggest races around. And um, I think he's had a good prep. Two runs back, four lengths see it again, two lengths mucho de Nero, and now going the, the best track and trip. So a nice swinger bet, see it again in Rascalian. That'll pay quite handsomely. You're probably looking at around 10 Rand. Um, so those are the only two I'm focusing on. Uh, probably a straight line exacta for me. But uh, others to consider, Mucho De Nero on the up. He's got a bit of work to do at the weights. And one more to consider, Pakaya. I thought he could get into the action for minor money.
Okay, so it is the principles that 11 from 13, a straight line, uh, exactly possibly. Mm. Load up on the uh, swingers. That is uh, definitely a guaranteed swinger. And then if you're going further, trifectus quartets, the uh, six Mucha Dinero supplemented late after that last victory. And uh, the three Pequet. And now, Mr. Marie, it is uh, saving you for your uh, thoughts on a race number nine from a Joburg and uh, a long-time follower of the Mets perspective. What do you say? Uh, one horse race, Cecil. One horse race. <laughs> I'm not concerned about the pace whatsoever. <laughs> the pace will be on. It has to be on. Rachel Vienica is riding for Mr. Nick Johnson, who's got the favorite, uh -huh. on without question. Now, Rachel's got a very close association with C yet again. Everyone's worried about the pace, whether they're going to call and whatnot. Without question, we'll ensure that it's a decent running race. Um, of that, there's no doubt. So Rachel's loyalties, would they be to Justin, who wants to win the race? He's got the likes of Mucha Donera, or are they to uh, the owner, Mr. Nick Johnson? To the owner, Mr. Nick Johnson. I okay. Mean, uh, he must be his biggest owner in his yard. Yes. He's um, one of the biggest in the country, yeah? yeah. And, who's, now... and who says without question can't keep rolling? Yeah. Himself. Okay. Um, it's, they're not sacrificing, though, so they're, they're, they're going to uh, just going ensure it, a good gallop. It, it, it could keep rolling. Uh -huh. It's horse racing. I think Royal Ozzy, um, his form since being gilded is very good, Cecil. Yeah. Now, I know in his penultimate start, what was it, the green point, he's well held on that, but then he went to the front. Last time out, they tried different tactics. I mean, Cabello put him to the sleep at the back of the field beautifully. Um, the pace will be on. He'll be running on. I don't see him troubling see it again whatsoever, but maybe he can sneak into second position. Um, Pakai is another one that I'd include. But, um, yeah, you don't have to look past the favourite of you. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned a Royal Aussie because Royal Aussie, if you remember last year this time, was actually in a pretty decent form, I believe. It was uh, Christoph Sumio or somebody who rode it to a victory or close to a victory on what was a very good day on the... Uh, no, it was not Christoph Sumio. It was our other French friend. Yeah, Christoph Sumio was it, who came to ride in the July last year. And they had a very good afternoon off it at uh, the Met last year. So uh, Royal Aussie, certainly one for those at the back ends of trifectas and quartets. Let's confirm. What is the selection for that uh, last, uh, in fact, uh, for the uh, big one? That is the race number nine, the last leg of uh, the pick six. It is uh, exact 11 by 8 and 13 and that is a courtesy of the weighted to win team that is the two wise men they've gone with the bank seat again with 8 and 13 being the likely contenders for that second berth just to confirm that number 8 in a race number 9 the D met uh, renewal of the 2024 uh, renewal Royal Aussie and uh, Rescalian would make up that uh, second berth. That's your selections uh, for the big one. Remember, it is a uh, race number nine of 11 on the card.